Oh. Riley came up to say hello. Hey, but oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. What are you doing? Thank you. What's up, everybody? Ruck is here. So, uh, if you've noticed, on our YouTube channel, we do a lot of raid videos. Like, a lot. Uh, and it came to my attention that I don't exactly have a video on tips and tricks and basics uh, for doing raids. So, on the topic of raiding, today we're going to do an in-depth tutorial. Real quick, shout out to Nancy for bringing it to my attention that uh, I don't have a video like this and that a lot of people in the community might find something like this useful. So let's start at the very beginning. What is a raid? A raid is where you have eight hours to break into a base and take as much stuff as possible while fighting off waves of zombies. The more walls and chests you break down, the more noise you make, which is what attracts the zombies. Now once you get to 100 noise, an unkillable version of the big one will spawn uh, with each swing of his mighty paw coming down at you will do more and more damage to where he will eventually one-shot you if you don't leave the base in time. Now, how do you get a raid? Well, the first requirement is that you have to be level 150, and then you can go to your radio tower and call the raiders, and they'll ask you to do five tasks. These tasks are mostly random and will include things like clearing a floor in Bunker Alpha, killing a rare spawn like Timmy the Bloat, killing things at the farm like the Ravager, or Bulls or Savage Giants, things of that nature. Now, once all five tasks are complete, they will reveal the raid to you. Once the base spawns on the map, you have eight hours to go in and get as much stuff as possible. Now, just because you have eight hours doesn't mean you can use the full eight hours. Once you go to the base and leave, the base will despawn. So what happens during the raid? During the raid, you can only enter and leave from the base once. Dying, however, does not constitute as leaving. But if you die twice, you will lose everything as the base will despawn. Knowing this will allow you to get some extra items if you do it correctly, but more on that later. Each raid will be different. Some will have stone walls, some will have tier 1 or tier 2 walls, and if you're unlucky you might find a base with some steel walls. Now each base in the game is meant to be raidable, so if you find a base that is say a full steel base that you cannot break into, there is a report system that will allow you to suggest to Kafir that they remove this base from the raiding system. The most important thing to focus on during the raid, besides taking all of the good stuff, is your noise meter. When you enter the base for the first time, you will have zero noise, and for each wall or chest you break into, it will add noise based on what item you're using to break these things down. Basically what you need to know is that using iron hatchets is going to be more noise beneficial than using a regular hatchet. And if you need to break down a stone wall, that's going to make the most noise as you have to use a C4. At 22, 45, and 72 noise, waves of zombies will spawn. Killing them with anything besides a melee weapon or a gun with a silencer will cause more noise. Knowing this, you definitely want to make sure that you bring a couple of melees or silence weapons with you to kill these zombies. Ideally, Glocks are going to be the most common gun that you would use if you have the silencer on it, because it will get the job done very easily, and you can save your more powerful guns for things like Bunker Bravo. It's important to note that crafting during a raid does cause noise as well, so make sure that you come fully prepared with all of the hatchets that you might need. Lastly, when it comes to noise, if you exit the base to go to the map, then re-enter, it will cause 14 noise. So make sure if you're doing this, you're doing it very cautiously. After you're finished with the raid, you will go back to your base where the raiders will be waiting for you. They will require a cut of what you took from the raid. So different items are worth different amounts with rare items such as electronic circuits or heat sensors being at the top. Whereas like empty bottles or empty cans are going to be at the bottom. So based on what they say, that will determine what's going to happen next. Ideally, you want to give them enough items in return to where they say seems true. I knew we could trust you. This means that you'll gain reputation with the raiders and they will not attack you. If they feel like you haven't given them enough, they will do a raid of their own on your base. And 
you're not gonna like that. You can choose to attack them and try to protect your base, which means you're fighting three raiders in full SWAT armor with VSSs that use medkits so they can't really die unless you're using either a landmine or a grenade launcher. So it's really a situation that you want to avoid unless you're just looking for something new and fun and challenging to do in the game. Now let's talk about some advanced tips and tricks. As we mentioned earlier in the video, you can die one time in your base without it counting as leaving, which means if you load your chopper up with a few items and then accidentally die, your chopper will respawn at your base with you. You can remove those items from the chopper, put them into one of your chests, and go back to the base. Now make sure that you only do this one time. If you die twice during the raid, you will lose everything that you once had at the base. So you really, really want to be careful with this. This is commonly referred to as the suicide trick or the bike trick. Next up, we have the box or tanner rack trick. So there may be times where you can get into a base without allowing zombies to follow you in. The way to do this is to find either a small box. Now make sure it's a small box and not uh, a trunk or, or any of the larger boxes. It has to be a small box. You can also do it with a tanner rack. And there are some instances where you can have the outline of a turret in, uh, in front of a wall and you can use that as well. This will allow you to get into the base, but because zombies have larger hitboxes than you, they're not able to follow you in. You can use this to get the zombies close to this box and then you can take them all down with uh, a long range melee weapon like a saw blade mace or a road sign. Also, if there's spikes surrounding the base, you can use this to your advantage and kite the zombies around all of the base uh, so they are killing themselves. This is going to save you weapon durability and anything else that you might lose during raiding the base. Now the only caveat to this is if you reach 100 noise and the big one cannot run and get to you, he will teleport to you after about 5 seconds. He will just teleport right on top of you. So be very very careful if you're using this against the big one. Especially if you've been kiting him around the wall and he's been swinging and hitting the wall. His damage is still increasing for every swing that he does. So if he teleports on top of you after he's been swinging at you against the wall for, you know, a couple minutes, he's more than likely just going to one shot you and then you're not going to get your stuff back. A very underrated uh, tip that I can give people is if you have a big base or a really, really good base and you want to be very conservative with noise, use a fish buff. Cooking perch and carp together will give you 10% less noise during a raid. So let's say you have a big base that requires two or three C4. You should definitely consider cooking these together if you have these two fish along with the kitchen stove. If you use two gold, fish you're going to get 20 minutes of this buff two silver fish is 15 and two bronze is 10 and just quick tip outside of rating if you're cooking two fish of different values together say like one bronze and one gold it will always go to the lower so if you use a gold uh, perch and a bronze carp you're only going to get 10 minutes of the buff so don't waste your gold the next tip is do your research. So I assume if you're watching this video, you probably know that there are a lot of great content creators uh, like Lady Rays and Manders that post raid videos that are basically tutorials on how you should do a specific raid if you want to get the best possible loot from the base. The next tip is knowing how the raiders cut work. Every time you do a regular raid, you're going to have to give the raiders a cut. So if you bring back a lot of high quality things uh, like, you know, electronic circuits and heat sensors and steel, they're going to want more of a cut. One thing that you could do is to put all your valuable things in the chopper. It seems like they ask for less items when your more expensive things or your more high quality things are in the chopper. Also consider having some modded spears or a bauxite that's available for you to give to the raiders. They seem to value this very very highly and it's really of little utility for a typical player. Lastly let's talk about skulls and revenge raiding. Every time you do a raid you will gain a skull for 24 hours. So first, skulls basically mean the more of them you have, the more likely you are to get raided. Uh, so you start out at zero skulls if you haven't raided before. You gain one skull for every raid that you do. 
and the only way to have skulls be taken away is if you get raided or wait for 24 hours for a skull to fall off. So if you get raided, you have a chance of getting a revenge raid. First, the raiders will have to take something from you. And I found that it really helps if you have higher reputation with the raiders for them to show you where your revenge raid will be. The main difference between a regular raid and a revenge raid is that there is no raiders cut. So if you get a revenge raid, everything that you take from the base is yours. There will be no raiders to pay anything to after that raid is done. A tip to make sure that the raiders do take something if you have a very well protected base would be to put some things like some modded spears or some uh, some bauxite or some aluminum wire into your old truck. This can't be protected, so the raiders will definitely break into it every time. And if they take those items and you have good reputation with the raiders, you are almost guaranteed to get a revenge raid. If you're worried about being raided yourself because you've done a couple and you have two or three skulls, make sure that all of your most valuable stuff is protected. So if you have a couple layers of stone, make sure it's behind that. If you have room in say Bunker Alpha or Bunker Bravo to store some valuable things like your heat sensors or your steel, make sure you're doing this. I found that raiders will likely take the path of least resistance, basically meaning if they have the option to break down either a level one wall or a level three wall, they're gonna break down the level one wall every time, which gives you the advantage of being able to create a honeycomb of tier one walls that lead to nothing. After they break down a few walls and they see that they're not getting anywhere, they will eventually take whatever is available to them out of your old truck and if the, you do have something in there for them to take, then again, you're likely getting a revenge raid. You're not losing anything that you don't want to lose, and now you get a raid for free to get to take more stuff. One final tip is that you can use your chopper garage basically as an impenetrable wall that the raiders will not be able to break into. Now, there was some debate behind this, but I, in a previous video, I did debunk this theory that the raiders were able to basically walk through that wall basically what we did was we took a bunch of chests and had them only protected by the garage and zero of the times that we got raided did the raiders come in and break those chests down so if you haven't already built your base to completion and you're still wondering how to do it take advantage of this and use your chopper garage as a free wall for you to use to protect all your good stuff just a quick reminder we do stream last day on earth every monday wednesday and friday link is in the description below come and hang out with us feel free to ask any questions there's a lot of wonderful people in the community that would love to help you out all right that's all we have for today did i miss anything are there any other tips and tricks that you want to share make sure that you put those down into the comments thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video Ooh.